Hi everyone, Randy here, amateur radio operator N2CUA. I'm going to go through the steps to <clears throat> use the um, software defined radio software called SDR Radio um, and set up the server so that uh, someone else could connect to your server and use your SDR Radio. So when you do one of the things you're going to have to do, <clears throat> at least in my case with Windows 7, is run it in administrator mode. So you have to hold down the shift key and right click on the icon and do run as administrator here. Um, yeah, could be other ways to do that. You could probably set up the uh, icon to do it automatically, but that's probably not the wisest decision. So let's fire this up. I don't have the uh, receiver on here right now, but I don't really think I need it just to show you. I'm not sure. I'll we'll find out in a minute here. So once you've got the um, <coughs> console up, you can um, go to Tools here, Tools tab, Server Manager. Let's see what we've got here. Uh, okay, it's still there. So under the Service tab, I've already installed the service. I did it manually from the DOS prompt. Um, I'm not sure where the instructions were for that, but I evidently later on I realized you didn't have to do that. I guess you could just open up this window and click on the install button here, and it'll install it. Um, and you have to be the administrator again to install that service and have it run. It runs under the local service login, so you don't have to worry about being logged in on it under any specific account for that to work. Um, then you can start and stop it here. And then uh, that is the accounts. For whoever you want to be able to log into your um, server and use the radio you have attached to your computer, you'll have to create an account for them. So you can just do add, <coughs> pick a username, um, W2DRB, I use call signs. And uh, pick a, a, a password, and then uh, comments if you want, don't matter. Um, and I haven't really messed with the data file <coughs> storage folders. I'm still just kind of getting used to how this all works. Anyway, so you have the account created, you have to have that. And then under radios, it's the same setup as you did before. You have to pull down here and find uh, RTL, SDR, USB. And it'll say a found one device, and you can add it, and it'll show up in here. Make sure there's a check mark here so that uh, it's enabled. Um, networking um, on the Windows firewall, if you click Add Port, it will add this rule to your firewall so that it'll allow traffic into your computer on this port number for uh, the SDR server. And you're also going to have to, if you have a wireless router or a regular router, um, you're going to have to either do it yourself or find someone that can go into your router and um, enable port forwarding or port triggering. It just depends how it's set up on your router, basically. And what you're doing, though, is you're telling the router that if it receives a packet in from either any address or you can specify an address if you know the address of the one that you're going to allow access to uh, to this from. Anyway, tell it that if it gets a uh, an inbound uh, connection request for port 7999 to forward it to the machine that you had the server on and you'll need to know that address as well. And tell it to forward that onto that. So that you have to set up on the router. Um, let's see what else we got here. And log file. These are all like um, connections that I've already had in the past, and it also gets you log files about like starting and stopping and just you know whatever happened, you know, is going on with the server. <clears throat> but it also includes connections. Um, and session is a session history. This is good for troubleshooting if uh, you're having trouble getting it to work. Cause it talks about you know somebody's trying to connect and all these things you're trying to run and set up listening and starting and all this and um, anyway, you can kind of see what's going on in there if, if for some reason it's not working. Or if you just want to look at it because it is working, <laughs> that's okay too. Um, the help screen, 
I give you some basics about set, you know, the server and all that. Is it's pretty generic information. Um, that's nice here. It tells you where those firewalls are. So that's really about it. I believe if you set all that up, someone should be able to connect to the server. I think I've covered everything. Um, the only other thing that is uh, I need to know is that. Um, Obviously, you have to have the USB receiver plugged in, but don't start it. Up here, we have radio, and then we press push what looks like a play button on a recorder. Don't start the radio. If you do, and they try to connect to your server, it's going to say that they can't connect because they don't have exclusive control or something along those lines. Well, I do remember the word exclusive being used, or exclusive rights, or something like that. And it's because you've got it on, turned on here yourself listening to it. So, <clears throat> I don't know, maybe at some point Simon will set it up so that um, it could run in slave mode. That would be nice. But um, for now, you can't. So, we have to make sure it's turned off. So you have to stop button, get it all set up the way I just told you. And then the person should be able to log into the server and then go up here and, and start it and then tune around and do everything that you can do from your end when you're listening to the the, uh, the USB device SDR receiver. So there you have it. Um, you know, comments, as long as they're um, done nicely, are welcome. If I had missed anything, please let me know. Um, you know, I'll gladly redo it. And also, I have just a question for all you out there that have used this already. If you happen to know the difference between this window down in the bottom where the waterfalls is here and the spectrum versus the one up here you know let me know I just haven't met through the help file and to figure it out really so. anyway and that's about it it's a nice program it's, he's uh, Simon's still working on modifying and, and updating and uh, he's a really good programmer so I'm sure he'll put other uh, nice features in here lots of bells and whistles and just continue to make it a, a nice program. Take care, everyone. Seven threes. And we'll catch you on the next video.